Hi again, this is Jonathan Wagner with ChooseToBeHealthy.com and I'm back again with Chris Barr, a natural food historian, and we're going to talk a little bit about selenium uh, and the importance of, the big, big time importance of selenium, just a little bit underneath GTF chromium. So, mm -hmm. it, Chris, if you could really go ahead and just start off about uh, uh, the lack of nutrients that are in our diet, of especially of selenium. And, and, the, and the, really the rise of cancer that's going on. And if you could just kind of start off with um, a little bit of a background on selenium and the importance of selenium. In, uh, well, selenium was uh, actually first published in medical literature on a study from 1911, published in 1912 in the German Medical Journal, as a treatment that, was, that they showed successful results treating cancer. Um, and there were many studies that followed that over the next half a century and uh, published in medical journals with success with breast cancer uh, in 1915, 1920s, 1930s. Um, and it's a long story short, it kind of got swept aside until 1957 when Dr. Klaus Schwartz at the National Institutes of Health and U.S. government uh, in liver studies um, f discovered that the liver ceases to function if there's no selenium there. And we've since learned that it's a very uh, liver-specific nutrient, but so much more and far beyond that. Well, that kind of gave permission. There was a renaissance of selenium research then in the 60s and the 70s, and much of it revolved around cancer, some around arthritis, and there are many other things that selenium is beneficial, in fact, even necessary for such as the, the thyroid gland. Um, actually, selenium is more important than iodine is. Everybody knows iodine, but they Absolutely. don't know that yeah. iodine is virtually worthless in the absence of selenium because there's a conversion that's necessary of the iodine um, hormone that doesn't happen without selenium. Um, but there was a cancer renaissance especially, and researchers throughout the world, separate from one another, discovered that the higher the selenium level of the body, the lower the cancer incidence was. They, uh, they looked at uh, what they called the, um, the industrialized nations of the world, uh, Japan, America, Canada, North America, uh, the European nations, and they found that there was what, what was called an inverse proportional relationship that was exact. The highest selenium uh, nation had the lowest cancer rate. The second highest had the second lowest cancer rate. And it went right down the list to the lowest selenium had the highest cancer. Long story short, we know the, the levels at which cancer begins to appear. Um, and America is down in that low end. Uh, Japan has the highest levels, and for decades, every time they do a health survey, they find they have the lowest cancer incidence, they have the greatest longevity. Well, there's a lot of selenium in their soils, and they eat a lot of seafoods that are rich in selenium. So, you know, I, I learned back in the 70s and early 80s, the average Japanese consumption of selenium in their dietary was 350 plus micrograms a day. In America, around 200 or less, and it's much less now than it was then. So that's why the difference. Again, going back to like a refined diet. Of, well, uh, part of its refinement, yes, 92% of selenium is removed when they refine whole grains into white flour. But also the soils in America, one third of them are very low in selenium, one third are high and one third are moderate. Mm. So depending on where the food that you're it's eating is grown, uh -huh. is gonna, you're gonna have less selenium in some areas, in many areas, most even, than in others. Uh, and then on top of that, modern farming practices, sulfur amendments prevent the uptake of the plant of selenium. So even if there is selenium in the soil, if they're using sulfur amendments, which have become more common in the last 50 years, there's going to be less selenium taken up by the plant, even if it's there. Uh, so selenium is an antioxidant. Uh, Dr. Denham Harmon first proposed the theory of, uh, of antioxidants and aging back in the early 50s, and almost nobody paid attention at all for 10 years. Now it's fairly well understood. Um, even the the FDA had to be sued seven times and and lose every time and federal court order them to allow labels to, which most people don't use it because the the allowance of the the claim they're allowed says may prevent cancer 
but the FDA doesn't agree with this. So th they have to give a, uh, they have to allow a claim they don't want to. It's like they're kicking and screaming. Uh, it's very well established, and you know, so I have uh, have seen this, and yet. People are concerned about toxicity because of, that's a long story we don't have anywhere near time to get no, into. Sir, yeah. But if you look at the toxicity, the government has a website on selenium. It notes toxicity is mild gastrointestinal upset, um, garlicky breath, um, hair falling out. Now, I don't know about you, Jonathan, but I've never known anybody who's presented at the emergency room for having garlicky breath or a mild gastrointestinal upset or because their hair is falling out. It has a built-in warning system. So, uh, you know, people don't know that oxygen is toxic. You know, we have to have it to breathe, but it can also burn your lungs up if you get too much. Babies used to get blindness when they had premature or problem pregnancies because they didn't regulate the oxygen mm. properly. Selenium is less toxic than oxygen is. So. But again, the form makes all the difference. We talked earlier in another uh, first portion of this about whole food nutrition. The form of selenium in food is far more active. So you might think it's more potentially dangerous, but it isn't. Because the toxicity is based on the inability of the body to utilize the substance. So the non-food forms are more easily toxic, and even that's exaggerated. So we need selenium to protect the heart. We need it for the thyroid gland to operate. There is nothing more effective against free radicals that cause aging, heart disease, cancer, than selenium. There just isn't anything. And again, a whole food, a real form. And we know the amounts. There was a study in 1996 published by JAMA that showed just 200 micrograms daily over a, a greater than 10 year study period showed the greatest prevention of cancer reoccurrence in those who had already had cancer of any substance ever examined, whether it's a drug, a medical procedure, a vitamin, an amino acid, an herb, anything. Nothing has come close, a greater than 50% reduction in incidence. And that's, I think, you, 200 micrograms a day would be just a bare minimum, right? I mean, well, what? Dr. Gerhard Schrauser um, in 1977 said, uh, called 400 micrograms an optimum amount. Um, he actually, the quote from him in 77 was, if every woman in America took 200 micrograms of selenium every day, breast cancer rates would dramatically decrease in the space of a few short years. Well, this study rarely, they usually use a synthetic form in these studies. This one actually used whole food selenium, 200 micrograms a day. And they found exactly what the research researchers had stated before the study was done. They found a greater than 50% reduction of cancer incidence. And again, you, you, you recommend the innate response selenium? Because that's the form that has been documented by an independent researcher to be twice as available to the body as second best and more than a hundred times more available than all the rest. Wow. Okay. Well, folks, Chris also has a, a book on uh, selenium too. It's called Nutrition and You, all about selenium. One cancer answer, 100 years and counting. Uh, it's a great book and uh, wealth of information that we just have barely touched on. Well, and this, so, this just touches on cancer. This doesn't even absolutely. address arthritis, heart disease, Thyroid. Alzheimer's. Uh, and there are so many facets of selenium that are documented. And this just touches on the cancer aspect. Right. Well, you can go to our website, choosetobehealthy.com. Uh, we've got some other articles and more information that you can find out about Chris and, uh, and Whole Food Nutrition. So uh, come back and visit us for our next video and uh, check out our website, choosetobehealthy.com. Thanks, Chris. Thank you, Jonathan. Appreciate it.